And uh, there wasn't any other collective meeting after that, because Baba was getting more and more withdrawn in his work. So this was, I think, the last uh, sort of collective meeting that Baba had. Yeah. <coughs> Another one allowed to come was, uh, of course, Shanta Devi of Guru Prasad. So she was given the privilege to come and see Baba. And <coughs> being very quiet, it would be very informal. She would come and be in, be in the Mandli Hall with Baba for some time before she would be ushered into the women's side. And Baba would question her about her family affairs. She was a very, uh, what should I say, unhappy woman because of family affairs. As you know, her husband had uh, deserted her uh, and uh, of course the <coughs> her sons, they were a bit wavered and so she used to be quite disturbed with her, all the family people and the, the greatest thing that uh, disturbed her was that none showed any inclination towards Baba. And that hurt her very much. So Baba would console her quite often. She, he said that just by your coming, you have done the work for your entire family. Have no worry about them. I'll look to everything. Yeah. So that is the, the tremendous uh, advantage that one gets to come into the orbit of a perfect master or the avatar, of course that once you come, not only you have the benefit of his association, but he sees to your, to many generations all around you. That's, that's how it is. That's the great uh, value of, of a perfect master. Or of course the avatar. So then Baba <coughs> talks about other things and I, I remember there were full lights on and the fan was working and Baba says, do you ever get a thought that we are utilizing all these utilities lavishly? See the lights are burning, the fans <laughs> working here. Have you ever given a thought to what all expenses you have to undergo for my comfort? So Shanta Ben just laughs and says, Baba, it's a great pleasure and delight for me that you are making full use of all these uh, things that I, I could offer for you. And Baba was very pleased with the reply. And uh, she said that you are really blessed that you have all the wealth in the world as, as well as you have me, who, uh, who is of course the the biggest jewel <laughs> in her crown, as it were. So you have best of both the worlds, something like that. In our language, they, they said uh, Sonama Sugan means, Sona means gold and Sugan means fragrance. So in gold there is fragrance. Have you ever heard of any such? No. But uh, sub, sub, if some such thing happens, what a rare combination it could be. <laughs> that the, the beauty of gold and the fragrance uh, of the rose, something like that. So that's something like that Baba mentioned for her and she was very happy. And it was a nice meeting. And then of course Baba would send her inside to Mera. There she would be with the women for some time. And then he, so apart from that, um, not many outsi outsiders would be there. <coughs> One of the people who would be with Baba was a man called Zal Aydun. He was a very, uh, very funny type of person. He was a close friend of um, Baba's brother Jal. So somehow Jal would wangle him into Guru Prasad and he was a very shy and very quiet type of person and had a very uh, 
effeminate voice, you know. So, if anything, then he would just put down his head and reply, if Baba asked him anything, in a very squeaky voice, you know. <laughs> he was small uh, and very thin and lean, yeah. So, Baba would make fun of him very often. So, one of the days Baba asked us all to go to, we to the West End Theatre. There was a nice film there and somebody must have told Baba about it. So, the women were sent and then the men manli. So, Baba asked Zal also to be there with the manli. So, we all went. It was a I remember a wartime movie about how Paris was just saved in the nick of time. You know, Hitler had uh, given the uh, given instructions to his people to put uh, dynamite all around the city and all big installations and that when he gave the order, the whole city had to be blown up or some such thing. That was the theme. I wonder if you remember the, such a picture. I've heard How about Paris it. was saved or something. This is when Hitler was going to be withdrawing from Paris. That's he was right. Going to destroy yeah, yeah. It before he went. Yeah, you, it's a historical I've fact. Yeah. So the film had come. It was a very good film. Yeah. And all the tenseness was there, and how they, in the nick of time, Paris was saved by divine providence. So we enjoyed the picture. The next day, we are all before Baba again, and then, as usual, Baba said. Did you see the picture? And would ask us comments about the picture. So each one would say, yes, Baba, it was excellent, quite thrilling, and there was so much suspense. Then it was the turn of Zal. So Baba says, stand up. <laughs> so, did you see, what, did you like the picture? So he says, no, Baba, in that very squeaky voice. You know. He says, what? Baba looks up uh, in a great surprise. What do you mean? Didn't you accompany the manli to the, to the theatre? No, I did, but I didn't see the picture. So he says, what do you mean by oh, you didn't see the picture? So he says, no, I just kept looking down. Baba said, didn't I order you to see the picture? How dare you did that? No, Baba, I never see any picture in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Baba says, now I order you, go again and see the picture. I want you to see it from beginning to end. <laughs> and he told somebody to get him a ticket and he was sent post haste <laughs> that evening and he had to go and see the whole picture again. And the next day he had to report back to Baba <laughs> what he had seen. So such was all I do. What, was just so unworldly or why would he not even look at a movie? Yeah, he, he, he always he would look down, <laughs> never looked up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very funny type of character and uh, very straightforward, never would talk with anybody. Only if somebody spoke to him, then he would reply. But uh, he was a very withdrawn type of person, yeah. It makes me think of this Kirkpatrick you talked about last Yeah, time. something like that. But Kirkpatrick was different. He was totally a sort of must. <laughs> but uh, Zal Aydun was not exactly a must. But uh, in fact, Baba then mentioned that he was my hermit. Baba gave him the title of hermit. Yeah. So another in comic thing happened was we were sitting in front of Baba one day and in the morning Baba says, how do I look? So each one describes Baba, you look beautiful, you look very handsome, or you look very radiant. And in fact that day he seemed to be looking very beautiful. So then Zal, stand up, <laughs> how do I look? Baba, you look very old to me. <laughs> Baba looked surprised. I look old? He asked us, do I look old? We all say, no Baba, you look very beautiful, very, very, very radiant. Zal, how do I look? 
No, Baba, you look very old. He says, <laughs> so Baba says, get out of the room. I don't want to he- see your face again. <laughs> so poor Zal uh, crawls out of the room and stands outside. After a short while, Baba calls him in again and says, now Zal, how do I look? And he says, Baba, you look nice. <laughs> The Baba says, come on, now sit down and say, <laughs> now you're acceptable. <laughs> so such a little funny thing would happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> actually, people took advantage of his nature. He was uh, from a very well-to-do family, extremely rich, so much so that there was a big uh, mansion which belonged to him and uh, <clears throat> he wouldn't have anything to do with it. So his brother and his brother's wife <clears throat> confiscated the property. <clears throat> and he uh, allowed that to happen and would stay <clears throat> in one of the servants' quarters in the same compound. Mm. And he was quite happy there. He didn't want all the hassle and bother of owning a property. So such was this Dal Aydin. Is he a uh, Zoroastrian? Yeah, Iranian. Iranian, yeah. so a friend of Jal's. Yeah, yeah. Was he a long time lover of Baba's? Yeah, or? yeah. Right yeah. from the old times. <coughs> um, he, he would be very, uh, quite recluse and even after Baba passed away, he, uh, he never missed any Amatiti. He was in fact the first one who who would appear at Merabad to join the Amatiti celebrations. But the whole time for the Amatiti, he would stand at one spot behind the cabin, looking down, never taking part in anything that was going on, <laughs> but just be near Baba's uh, Samadhi. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> one day, uh, he just disappeared. So people were wondering what happened and then the, his room was locked so they tried to open, it was all locked, they couldn't get in but then a couple of days later somebody broke open the door and he was found dead inside the house. Yeah. So he just lived unobtrusively and passed away unnoticed. <laughs> Yeah, just like a hermit. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I I didn't just disappear, but I. I did fade away, and uh, but before I did that, I saw to it that nobody was left in the lurch. Huh? <laughs> I wasn't found dead in. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> this reminds me of the going to th- uh, pictures. In the early days when Baba was at Guru Prasad, he would often accompany us to go, uh, to see good films, mainly comic ones like Hardy Laurel or Charlie Chaplin. He would like such comic movies. I remember <clears throat> there was this film of Saps at Sea of Laurel and Hardy. Have you seen the film? No, I haven't. It's a very comic thing. So uh, it was play, uh, running at the West, West End Theatre and we all were there, Baba was there. Another movie was uh, <coughs> one of those uh, nature series of Walt Disney and it was called The African Lion. So uh, we had gone and it would always be matinee shows and the hot season matinee in the afternoon. <laughs> Why that time? Was it that was Baba's favorite time. Two o'clock was the time for outings for Baba. 
two o'clock in the afternoon. Even the blazing <laughs> yeah. hot in There would be vapors all over me. <laughs> and Baba enjoyed the heat, you know. <laughs> Somehow he had affinity for heat, I don't know what. <laughs> so, yeah. And I remember this particular theater for uh, this African lion, it was somewhere in the city called uh, Limay Natya Mandir. It was an old ramshackle theater with tin roof, mind you. No, no ventilation, no fans. They shut out the fan when the picture started <laughs> to save on electricity. <laughs> and so it was just like an oven inside. And we thought Baba would just get up halfway and we'd be out of the whole agony. You know? <laughs> but Baba sat through the whole length of the picture. <laughs> so, but it was a nice picture. Eh? Walt Disney's uh, picture showing the African lion. Yeah. Did he ever uh, go to Indian films? Mm, I don't remember. He may have, yeah, in the past. Of course, there were many Indian films in Baba saw. Yeah, there's a big Indian film yeah, yeah. history, I know that. But nice films like uh, Baba, I think, saw Tukaram and all these other good movies. Uh, then uh, I think Baba must have seen uh, that, uh, that call, I forget, uh, Tansen. Mm -hmm. it, it's about a, a great musician's life in the court of Akbar. I think he must have seen quite a few Indian movies also. In the 60s though, when he would... See the it wasn't films. much, yeah. Just occasionally he would come out for and it would be English movies mostly, yeah. But uh, in the later years then Baba just uh, stopped going outside. So he would send the women uh, manly, then the men manly and we would be going out to see pictures. And amongst the last ones that we saw was a, a very crazy picture called Mad, Mad, Mad World. <laughs> One of the last few pictures that Baba sent the Manli. So it was a very crazy picture, I know. You, you've seen I that? Saw that? Oh, yeah. yeah. But There's nicely some money done. Yeah. Hit somewhere and they're some, all chasing it. Yeah, hidden treasure. <laughs> and this mad. A motor car ride, how the film starts, you know, and the man kicking the bucket. <laughs> That's right, he kicks the bucket. Yeah. So, very, and then there was this absent minded professor, and one or two of these films that we saw towards the end. So, these were picture going times. Yeah. At one, on, in one year, he sent us for lots of films. I don't know why. So, even crazy movies, you know. <laughs> so, some Baba, work Baba must be having, yeah. And Baba wouldn't go, he would be up by himself there. But he would afterwards characteristically want a report on the Yeah, film. sometimes he would want to know. For instance, there was Limelight that he, he particularly wanted us to see. Because Limelight was a picture which was not released for Indian uh, exhibition for for many years and it had just come for exhibition. It was a beautiful picture from Charlie Chap, Charlie Chap, a classic picture. I wonder if you have seen it. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful, really. And it seems he must have read about Baba's books and all that. There's so much talk of reincarnation and in all these things. And and Baba was wanting us to see the picture. The next day, of course, we had to give our comments and he asked me what was the scene you liked most. So I remember telling him, Baba, there was this scene about, that, about the ballerina who was uh, crippled due to some psychological... No, she, she fell down and uh, had an accident and her career was uh, abruptly uh, snapped because of this. And then she recovered, but every time she tried to perform, she, uh, there was a psychological barrier and she would just collapse. 
and she was in dire straits, hungry on the streets, and as, as usual, Charlie would was the one who always was uh, having sympathy for the, these downtrodden people, and he brought her in and looked after her and, and, and made her wholesome again, and then she was back on her feet, and then. There was this big performance that was to come up, and she was all prepared for it. And then, as she, as she's about to go on the stage, she, she suddenly has this psychological breakdown and collapses there. And we see Charlie strutting up to her and giving her a tight slap across the face, and it shook her so much that she just got up uh, uh, due to the sheer shock and just went on stage and gave a thrilling performance. And uh, while she's performing, and uh, Charlie is satisfied to see her dance beautifully, and he just uh, kneels down on the backstage and does a little uh, cr uh, crossing, what do you call that? Uh, crossing Yeah, himself. crossing himself. To whoever is there, because he was an atheist, you know. <laughs> so, and so I said, Baba, this scene was beautiful. Baba says, yes. He liked the scene being described to him. Well, it seems that Chaplin, from early until late, was one of the entertainers Baba had enjoyed. Oh, yeah. He was, he was a perfectionist, so he had to take so many retakes of films until he was personally satisfied that each, each frame was according to what he wanted. And most of his movies, he was the producer, the director, the actor, the script writer, the, the musician, everything. I don't know how he did it. So really, he was a genius <laughs> and, and very comic, no question about it. Yeah, then another incident at that time that I remember was, are we at the end or what? No. Mm -hmm. Uh, <coughs> uh, one day, <coughs> see, Baba would uh, afternoon also, and that would be the end of the day for him. And then we would just be sitting or loitering about, and sometimes Baba would call us to the bedroom and have to say something back. So, <coughs> one, day, one time he, he was holding a soda water bottle in his hand, and asking each of us to approach. And then himself made us drink from the bottle of his hand, you know. Each one to come and he did, did that to all of us over there. And then he says, <coughs> do, you, do you realize the significance of what I'm doing now? So he asks each one, you know. So I, I recollect one of them who was Vishnu Master at the time. So he says, Baba, I think by doing this you must be uh, quenching the thirst of somebody who is lying in the desert, thirsty or something. So Baba says, very petty and it belittles my status <laughs> for you to think such a small thing for me somebody else, and so on. <laughs> then he asks Eraj. So Eraj says, Baba, I think you are by this uh, bringing us close to you or something like that. I don't remember exactly what, that's very hot. <laughs> and then recollect much. But he said something to the effect that bringing you each so close, holding you in my hands and making you drink signifies that I am working for my lovers and bringing them close to me. It was a very profound little thing that he said, yeah, like the words. And it's not recorded anywhere. It just came to me one of these days. It sounds like a very sweet moment. Yeah. Uh, actually. You know, it's funny, when different people talk about Baba, sometimes you'll have a sense of a very angry, fiery Baba who's berating all the times. But to tell the truth, Marilyn, over these hours with you, it's, it's, I have that side of Baba has not been much, so, but more of a, I don't know, 
Yeah, not much was there. There yes, used to be. Yeah. There used to be, yeah. As I said about Padri, you know. Right. At that time, Baba was all fury, you know. And it doesn't sound that Baba would get ferociously angry at you very much. That didn't happen very no, much. No, not much. Maybe it didn't much. <laughs> I was the timid kind, you know. <laughs> so I was very afraid of causing any displeasure to him. So kept at a safe distance. <laughs> yeah. Another incident where we were sitting around Baba and one day he just says, see you people are sitting here in front of me and I am sitting in front of you and yet I say all this is, is illusion and uh, you people, although I tell you that it is illusion, you will, you will not believe me but I say that this is illusion. So, uh, can you, uh, can anybody tell me how you could uh, reconcile this situation? That although you feel that all this is so real, here you are sitting in front of me, here is the earth under you, the floor under you, I am here sitting and I say that I am not here, neither are you here, it's all illusion. So he starts asking people <laughs> questions and I suddenly had a bright idea and without my turn I speak out of turn. Baba, I think uh, the analogy of the dream that uh, we have a dream and in the dream we feel how real everything is and uh, we don't feel that it's, uh, it's not true. When we wake up there's nothing left there. So Baba says, are you speaking out of turn? I didn't ask you. <laughs> anyway, your reply is good. <laughs> or some such thing will be. Yeah. So these were quiet moments with Baba. Or otherwise there would be, of course, the usual card game with few of us around him. None of those old boisterous games when big crowds would be with Baba the hall would be filled. So unlike that, it would be on a much quieter scale. Were these, uh, was cheating rampant in, in the old, in those big games? Oh, much, yeah. But at these uh, late games, were they more... Not much, rules? yeah. Baba was not much in the mood. It was just a pastime, you know, that we played cards. And most of the time we could see that Baba was quite withdrawn and more and more, uh, very much, uh, uh, what can I say, um, uh, as it were, uh, all the while uh, employed, I mean all the while and doing his work and yet trying to be in, with us, giving us company. But we could see that that how he was gradually withdrawing from us. Yeah. So there would be a sense even when he was with you on occasions like this that he was really absorbed in something else. Not exactly absorbed, but uh, <clears throat> that um, that liveliness was not there yeah, of old. Although it would be there sometimes, but most of the time it was a, a quiet sort of atmosphere around. Yeah more and more absorbed in his work. Would you, would you feel, you know, was there a certain sadness of those old things that were gone? No, what we felt was the, the suffering that he was undergoing because he had this neck pain and this collar and the, the hip joint pain was there and all these physical uh, disabilities and, and uh, all the, and, it, and the, <clears throat> the weak condition that he was in, that used to make us feel quite sad you know, at heart. Of course, we hadn't to show it to him, but in the back of our minds we, we would have this feeling. And it, it got more and more as, as the time approached him. So, practically that was the end of Guru Prasad's stay and uh, then Baba 
was to leave and of course uh, the usual farewell was not there as of as was the case last year and <coughs> baba just uh, went away when he was due to leave i think by the end of june and then baba was back at mehrazad so for that the guru prasad stay there had been no open darshan for his kuna lovers no no except that little meeting that baba had of the kuna center the people not all the lovers just the mainly baba center workers workers meeting so basically that was the end of guru prasad stay and then baba went back to mehrazad and uh <clears throat> as usual in uh, the following year uh, in january february i uh, i was again here at mehrazad for his birthday occasion and uh, the seclusion continued <clears throat> i'll just have a look if i let out any points Oh yes there was one incident i remember that uh, one afternoon baba had called some of us for a card game uh, i don't know which I, I was that the same year or not i can't place the exact year but i think it was then and baba suddenly decided to retire early in, in his bedroom so he sent word to the people who had gathered there that all should go and have ice cream in place of not being able to see him and that they shouldn't feel bad about not seeing him so in in honor of that they should go and ha- enjoy ice cream <laughs> <laughs> there was one incident that it's i suddenly remembered this morning <laughs> and so we all trooped to the railway station one of the ice cream stalls and <laughs> someone stood the ice cream for us and <laughs> we all enjoyed the ice cream party and then went back home <laughs> your sense of humor baba had huh? <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yeah so then we come back to Mehrazad in this is now 1967 and uh, again baba seclusion continues and uh, <clears throat> the seclusion is getting more and more strict but uh, the only exception that was made was about bill a page so <clears throat> baba had promised him earlier that he would call him for some for few days to stay at mehrazad and so baba sent uh, the message that he should come and uh, during the birthday time so he was here i remember when i was here also and he came here about mid february for a couple of weeks and <coughs> he was here and i think that was the only time he got to stay with baba so close and for such a prolonged time so <clears throat> there were few incidents connected with bill at the time and uh, one uh, one humorous incident i remember was that baba used to come every morning as i said and after coming over from the women's side baba would have his usual walk up and down 
So he stands before Bill while he's walking and he looks at him and uh, in a very inquiring manner and Bill wonders what what is Baba looking at him so seriously for and he, and uh, then Baba says what's all these hair sticking out on your cheekbones <laughs> <laughs> mm, so uh, he says Baba they I leave them off I don't shave them because they then would become very thick and would start hurting the Baba says what about Joan w- wouldn't they prick her and, you see, that's the reason why Joan is getting so frail in her health. <laughs> Shave them off. <laughs> the poor Bill was so embarrassed. Yes, Baba, I'll get rid of them. And that day he went and cleaned himself up. He looked quite handsome after that, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, he had these long whiskers right down here. <laughs> so little funny things Baba would do even during these times of seclusion. Where did Bill stay? He stayed in room number seven. I see. And yeah. Francis's room was still Fra- right in... Francis was there, <laughs> in room number eight. Oh, I thought yeah. that Francis was staying in Ludley Hall. No, that was in the initial stages. Then uh, that room was emptied and Francis was given that room to work for. He was work- working on the poems and all that. So he would be quite busy. So on that room was Francis and the other side was Baidul. The room number six, that small storeroom you see. So one day uh, Baba asked the Fra- uh, Bill, did you sleep well? And uh, Bill says, yes Baba, uh, I did sleep somehow. So he says, ah, so what was it? <laughs> Because Francis had a habit of uh, giving l- loud lectures while he was sleeping, you know. Yeah. So he would t- talk quite loudly, you know, and a big sermon would be uh, <laughs> heard <laughs> right outside the room. And as for Baidul, he was a, not- a notorious snorer. <laughs> so ba- Baba says, yes, for Baidul on one side. <laughs> and with uh, Francis on the other side, I can well imagine how how well you could sleep. <laughs> yeah. So, and of course, Bill was uh, very busy with Francis to form the charter for Autar's abode <coughs> because it hadn't been formulated. So Baba wanted them, wanted them to work that out and uh, finalize everything so that uh, it could be read to him before Bill left. And since Francis was staying with Baba, so Baba wanted the entire property to be uh, in Bill's name and then thereafter Bill would have to form a sort of trust and then uh, (coughs) bequeath the whole property to the trust. So all the formalities were being written out. So Hiraj was also asked to assist and they would sit late in the nights and uh, prepare this uh, charter for the Avtar's abode. And (coughs) yeah, so then it was Baba's birthday time and uh, as usual, as I said, the, it was the staff who would do all the decorations and they got another idea. That year, the, they decorated Baba's chair also, very gorgeously. And they built a big arch on top and there was a big balloon hanging on the top. So when Baba came in and uh, then we greeted him, with birthdays and all that and then uh, <coughs> at the signal from Yusuf uh, a string was held by Bill so he pulled it and there was a knife there which cut the balloon <laughs> and there was a big shower of rose petals on Baba <laughs> yeah. 
some new thing he had done. He had worked all night to get that those petals into the into the balloon, you know. <laughs> so so Baba enjoyed that. Yeah. So that was the celebration that time for Baba. And did you have much to do with Bill, uh, especially when during his stay or? No, we just used to talk with each other, go out for walks with Teraj, morning, evenings, nice what walks. Would, what would you do in the afternoons after Baba was gone? Would you have the freedom to go and take a walk? Yeah, you could not only freedom, but Baba had asked us to go for walks. So, at about this time we would go out for walks, for long walks, because Teraj used to have quite long walks then. <laughs> What, an hour, two hours? Yeah, hour, hour and a half. Sometimes go up seclusion hill or sometimes go to the lake or beyond the lake, yeah. So... <clears throat> so usually after one or two o'clock you wouldn't see Baba again that day, unless he... No, he would call. come back in the afternoon. Oh, the yeah. there's still afternoon yeah. sessions? there would be afternoon sessions. Um, morning session, Baba would be up... up say from 8 to about 12 o'clock and then afternoon from say about 2, two o'clock or so <coughs> till about 3.34 and then Baba would retire. Yeah. So that would be the usual pattern. Or when he didn't come in the afternoons then Baba would call us to his room and we would be there, Erech would read the paper in the afternoon to him there, yeah. And in the evening then Baba sent a bill for uh, the procession because it was the second year that the procession was being uh, carried out uh, by the Nagar Center. And uh, Baba asked Bill to <coughs> participate in the, in the uh, procession. So he was sent there. He, <coughs> so I think Adi, Sarosh, they were all in, in the procession. Then, yeah, uh, in the morning I remember Bill uh, had brought some uh, cassettes of uh, recordings by Jenny and Ruthie. They were his two daughters. <coughs> Ruthie was the elder one and Jenny the younger. They were children then. So Francis had sent some of his songs to be set to music there. And they did a wonderful duet with both these uh, girls singing. And so Bill had brought, brought it over and it was played before Baba. And we all liked it very much. So Baba said, it's beautiful. And I would like them to continue to sing like this and spread my name by their singing. Yeah. Baba asked him to convey his love to them, to his wife Joan. Also he remembered Michael on that day. Did Francis himself, uh, was he composing songs and presenting them to Baba at this time? Yeah, he was doing Would he sing them to Baba? <coughs> I remember once he did uh, bring this, uh, uh, bring, it, bring a harmonium inside and he told Baba that he wanted to, uh, he's, he's starting this new thing about Baba's name repetition. So, Baba's dhun as it were. And he was the first one who sang, he was, would have the harmonium as an accompaniment. <laughs> and sing. So Baba liked that, yeah. Some melody he had. I, I don't rec recollect, but it, he sang. He didn't have a very um, pleasing voice, <laughs> something like mine. <laughs> but nevertheless, he, he did sing. So, just Baba's name. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I think the Nehrazad stay was basically that and there was nothing very special after that. And uh, Bill, 
after his couple of weeks stay was over he he was asked to leave and on the day he left i remember we were sitting here in the morning and baba called him and gave him a nice white shawl uh, to take to carry with him which baba was using personally so that was it yeah. was baba's health uh How was his neck? I read in the family letter today that at one point he was saying his neck pain was a little better. Yeah, gradually it just uh, faded off, and then he stopped complaining about it in the later years. Was it the cervical collar that helped, or just no? Well, uh, the doctor had said that uh, it takes time for the the vertebrae to uh, to calcify, you know. And once that happens then the further depression stops and the pain subsides so until that time the collar helps in keeping it, the neck in position but eventually it uh, it corrects itself but you have this stiffness in the neck you know yes, so we were at the end of the stay at merazad I think we have covered most of the points there. <coughs> ah, oh yes, I must have forgotten this. So another thing was uh, Harry. Hari Kanmore was given instruction by Baba to um, always uh, give a public uh, uh, performance of Baba's on Baba's birthday. So he would uh, he would reserve this uh, room in uh, the hotel Babizon Plaza, and uh, he have. You, did you ever go to yes. those meetings here? Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, so. Harry was always for grand and great things, you know. So it would be this big posh place, the Hotel Barbizon Plaza, and the big hall was booked, and people would be invited there. But at that year, he somehow contrived to get the New York Radio, New York Radio Worldwide or something. It was. And uh, to to uh, record the program live, and uh, then the next day to to be relayed to, to the world. Being shortwave, it was all over the world, and he obtained he got the uh, the radio to obtain permission from the government to specially beam it to India. <laughs> so that's how. He said that uh, he sent a message that this is going to happen. So on this time, on this day, make it a point to listen to this program. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a nice big transistor somebody had sent, and Mani used to play to Baba on that some some uh, radio program. So Baba asked me to locate the station that he had uh, sent. So. Three or four days ago, I could get the station he he had marked, and uh, we could hear the thing quite clearly. Uh, the, uh, the the signal code and all that was there, and so I, was, I said, "Yes, Baba, I, I've got the station properly marked." And then uh, the ne- uh, uh, the day after Baba's birthday, the program was to be relayed, and uh, I could. <clears throat> we all gathered in the room there, uh, as in the side of Mandli Hall, and uh, uh, we tried to get the program on the radio. But unfortunately, that night there was lots of disturbance. But uh, some snatches of uh, the program could be heard, and there was Harry singing the. So his favorite song, Swanee, you know. <laughs> so we could hear just a few, few sentences, and then 
happy Baba birthday and all that quite loud in his voice, but, but just snatches yeah. So Baba then sent message to him that we did get uh, to hear some part of his program. <laughs> And of course, he must have been very happy about it. So, that was the end of that stay. You know, I did notice in my notes, hmm. if I must say, took this wrong way, that Ranju did die in January 67. Do you remember anything about that? No, I don't recollect. <laughs> but it was recorded, huh? that Ramji died. I think 11 January 67. Yeah, he was staying in Satara at that time. So, Satara? Yeah. So Baba, the, some message must have come and Baba, but I can't recollect uh, the incident as such. Yeah. So, are there any other references for that period? No, that's the only one that I noted for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, yes, uh, just before I left, uh, Baba remembered to tell me that uh, that when he came to Kuru Prasad, he would not like any disturbance again and that his seclusion was to continue. So he asked me whether the Puna people would feel hurt if Baba didn't see them this year again. So I said, no Baba, they, they, would, they should never feel that way. I'm sure that they would be happy in whatever is your wish. So Baba was happy to hear that. And then of course a circular was sent out by Adi that uh, when Baba came to Guru Prasad, none should disturb him and uh, that his stay would be very quiet at Guru Prasad that year. So I think we've come to the end. <clears throat>